throwdown last night. It was a little excessive, but he went up there and made two free throws, and that's all that matters. Um, I pretty much have uh, chalked it up to common fouls with me. LeBron said today that uh, he thinks it's only common fouls get called when, when he takes the contact. When Cavs hit you guys, it's a, a flagrant. Um, Maybe because we don't act. Maybe. Acting is a little part of it, so maybe we don't act. Think about that. The only flagrant foul called in game one was on Kevin Love. Stephen A., whose side are you on here? Well, I'm not on anybody's side. I mean, I definitely think that LeBron gets hacked, but he's a locomotive coming at people. And, you know, when you two, you're 6'9", 260 pounds, and you're coming at cats, you're going to get hit hard. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, maybe there are times where there should be a flagrant foul. I didn't see anything where I saw DeMar Carroll or somebody do something that I thought warranted a flagrant foul. I certainly get what DeMar Carroll is saying as well. He thinks sometimes LeBron is acting, that LeBron is more hurt than he actually is in a particular moment or whatever the case may be. But to side with LeBron, there is no doubt that he does get hacked a lot. There is no doubt about that. Folks are excessively physical with him, but it's because they have to be because he's so much bigger and stronger than everybody else. And the only thing that I, the other thing that I would say that that where I would come to LeBron's defense is that, you know, so many people are critical of him in this respect, Skip. They act like he's a baby or whatever the case may be. Has anyone ever taken a moment to say, well, what if LeBron wanted to hurt somebody like he can't? You think he can't? You know, I mean, come on now. I mean, it, it just, people need to put things in perspective sometimes. It's, you know, they try to talk about him like he's some punk. LeBron can hurt you, you know, physically hurt you if he wanted to. But he's smart enough to know that he's far more valuable to his team than those who try to hack him may be the theirs. And he's not going to find himself in that kind of predicament. But it does amaze me how people try to talk about him like he's some soft punk that can't hurt somebody when LeBron can hurt most dudes in the league anytime he wants. I, for one, do not consider LeBron James any kind of soft punk. Let me state that for the record. And Thank you. number two, I am definitely on his side in this back and forth here because to me, LeBron, the, the refereeing, refereeing of LeBron James has become Shaq-like. Stephen A., I know Shaq obviously much bigger than LeBron, but in, in Shaq's heyday, you want to talk about locomotive. I mean, he was unrefereeable back in that 2000 range when I, I've called him as dominating an offensive force as I've ever seen in basketball. Not pretty to watch. Not, not you know, there's no beauty to the game. There's no finesse to the game. You just couldn't even referee it because people were just beating on Shaq and he was running over defenders. And is it a charge or is it a hack? What, what is it? In, in LeBron's case, it's Shaq-like. Obviously, he's, what, what are we going to call him, 6'9"? Do we still, do we give him 6'9", 6'8", 260 maybe? And he's, he's so powerful and so physical that I feel like now the refs are letting the Damari Carrolls of the NBA world get away with beating on him. They, they get away with, with dishing out more punishment on LeBron that doesn't get called, especially flagrant called, and, and it's unfair to LeBron. I think he does deserve a little more protection from the refs than he gets, which leads me to Damari Carroll. The nerve of this man and I respect him as a player, Stephen A., but the nerve to, to, to go all the way to acting, you know, like to, to dare to, to accuse LeBron and company of occasionally acting, what, faking it, you know, like posing, uh, flopping. I don't know what exactly what the definition is that he's reaching I, for here. I was going to go there. Okay. I was going to go there. <laughs> all right. Well, there you go. But, but the nerve af of him after what we witnessed in game one at Cleveland, when I, I have seen mannequins play better defense than the Raptors played. Oh, they, they will, will seriously. They don't he's right. Any defense. You're absolutely yeah, right. Mannequins. It was terrible. Mannequins. Yeah. Oh, Molly, mannequins. Molly, Molly, yeah. Molly, <laughs> yes. Molly, yes. Molly, Skip is absolutely right. I know. It's just mannequins the visual. Mannequins have played better defense <laughs> yeah, the visual than Toronto is. did in game yeah. one. And, and, and by mannequins. the way, DeMar Carroll, he got abused. Abused yeah, by abused. the Raptors. Abused. Embarrassed. 
come on now. And, and you yeah. take this moment to say, acting, stop it. You, you're facing game two in LeBron's house. I, I, show me something. You know, somebody, somebody get in front of somebody and keep them from a layup line to your basket. I mean, that was, just, that was as embarrassing a playoff game of defense as I have ever seen. It was a joke. It was over like that. And, man, I, I don't want to see it again tonight. All right. <laughs> no. Unfortunately, you will. Yeah. All right. No mannequins, hopefully, tonight or soft punks. 830 on ESPN. You guys know what it is. Raptors, Cavs, game two. Our coverage begins with NBA countdown. That is charged by due at 730. But everybody is also talking about this, the next super fight in boxing between Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin. But when, if ever, will we see it? We'll get into this one next. Speaking of captivating, after Canelo Alvarez knocked out Amir Khan in the sixth round two weeks ago, he had until Tuesday to agree to a fight with Gennady Golovkin or vacate his title. On Wednesday, the WBC stripped him of his title after not reaching an agreement, but Canelo is still confident the mega fight will happen. Stephen A., what does this all mean now? Explain this to me for Canelo and Triple G in this fight happening. Well, it shouldn't mean anything. Uh, Canelo will use it as an excuse potentially uh, to, to justify trying to get Triple G down below the 160 pound limit, try to get him to fight at 155. Canelo, I'm sorry, Triple G has made the case all along. Why should I fight you at 155? You're the reigning middleweight champion. If this were Floyd Money Mayweather moving up from a, a traditional welterweight division to try and fight a middleweight and I had to meet him there, that would be different. But you, are the middleweight champion. Now, Canelo not having the belt anymore can justify not having the fight at the 160 pound limit, thereby saying, Triple G, if you want this money and you want this mega fight, you're going to have to come down to 155. And he obviously is going to have the support of Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy Promotions, who are going to do everything they can to facilitate a situation that assists in, in Canelo Alvarez obviously winning because he's their ticket, he's their money man. And we all know that Triple G is bigger and presumably stronger. So it, it remains to be seen. It's the fight we all want. Oscar and them swear they want to give us the fights we want to see. And to me, I don't see the problem because even if Canelo loses to Triple G, I believe that Canelo will be every bit as big as he is right now because he's a big time fighter and he would be fighting the middleweight champion. It doesn't negate what he can do. At the, at, the, at the super welterweight division and beyond. So I just think that they got to find a way to make this fight. I love Oscar De La Hoya. I like messing with him sometimes, but I respect the hell out of him. I'm a fan of what he does, but I hope he doesn't let me down. I hope he makes sure that this fight happens. I, I, I like your point, especially about 155 pounds. Makes sense to me. I, I still don't trust that Oscar De La Hoya, Golden Boy Promotions, want to give us this fight that we all clearly want yet. I'm just not convinced of that. They might have let this 15-day period expire, not just so they could renegotiate weight divisions and, and catch weight or whatever it's going to be, but are you sure that, that they, they want to... That, or they don't want to protect that golden goose that is Canelo a little longer because I just don't think he could beat Golovkin right now. Now, Golovkin's 34 years of age, Canelo 25 years of age, but are you sure that the strategy isn't let's, let's pick at least one more, maybe two more winnable, makeable, sellable fights against smaller fighters where, where you can do the catch weight going down, and obviously there's Keith Thurman and Danny Garcia, Kel Brook. There, there are all sorts of good fights that you could sell and you could win. And if, if you go ahead and make this match now and you lose to, to Triple G, as we both think that he would lose, you, you don't kill the Golden Goose, but you damage it a little bit, well, right? Well, yeah, I, I agree. I agree, and where I'm, where, I, where I'm losing faith in Canelo is what he said. I'll fight Triple G, I'll beat Triple G, but I won't be forced into the ring with Triple G, all of this other stuff. I get all of that. And I know there's some mega fights for him to fight at the welterweight division, and not only that, he's a money man. He's going to make the money because people have been running from Triple G so much. Triple yeah. G, as much of a knockout artist as he is, he ain't the box office attraction Canelo has with the support of Mexico. 
in reality, though, is this. What you call them into the ring for. What you told the world you'll fight anybody, anywhere, anytime. What you do all of that for if you then are planning on not fighting him and fighting somebody else. That'll be an incredible disappointment because that wasn't necessary. Because we know Triple G's ready to fight right now. You say you're ready for him to be your next fight. If you didn't mean it, why call him out like that for? Completely unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. On both him and Oscar's part. We shall see. Your boy Jerry Jones is trying to get this one at AT&T Stadium. When, yep. and if I wouldn't mind happen, that. Yeah. I wouldn't either. Yeah. But I think, I, th I, I think this fight belongs in Vegas, though. Yeah. I mean, a 100,000-seat stadium, as big as that Jumbotron is, I get all of that. But I think a fight like this belongs in Vegas instead of Texas. We shall see. Can't knock Jerry's hustle, though. He's, he's always I on the forefront the of everything. All right, more first take after the break. There's something I need to get into with Stephen A. Stay here.